This video is sponsored by AllPCB. What's up guys, Leon here, welcome to a new video. Guys, today's video is about a topic that I really love. I think this will be a classic Tesla and Mary video. We need high voltage, we need tubes and we need at the end a big plasma flame. Because today I will destroy all the GU50 high frequency vacuum tube Tesla calls on YouTube. Be curious guys, because small tubes can also produce big plasma flames. But let's start from the very beginning. In the last years I built some small high frequency oscillators with tubes. And of course we can also create plasma flames with MOSFETs. But that is a lot harder. It is very easy to destroy a MOSFET, but the harder to destroy a tube. Tubes or vacuum tubes were used in the past in all kinds of applications. Whether in radios, amplifiers or radar systems. Because of their construction they are very robust. In principle they consist only of glass and metal. And they can handle extremely high frequencies. So perfect for a Tesla coil. There are small tubes, but also very large ones. Since we can't provide many hundreds of kilowatts of power, we prefer to stick with the small ones. Today we will work with the Pentoad GU50. It is small, cheap and can switch quite a bit of power. Perfect for a vacuum tube Tesla coil. The GU50 originates from the Soviet Union. So this tube is basically older than me. The interesting thing is that the GU50 is a copy of the German LS50. This was produced in 1941 by the company Telefunken for the German Wehrmacht. At that time it was specially developed for the German Luftwaffe. In the mobile radar system called Würzburg, 12 LS50s were installed. About 20 years later the Soviet Union produced its own type of this tube. Probably it was reserved engineered. The GU50 was further optimized by the Soviets especially for field use. The low heat power and the comparatively high output power made this tube essential for mobile radio transmitters. Have you ever wondered why the GU50 had this knob? It allows you to take it out of the socket perfectly even when it's still hot. Very innovative. I could tell you much more about this little tube now, but I think this is enough history input for today. So guys, let's talk about the schematic. The schematic is not really complicated. The whole setup consists of only two coils, two resistors, three capacitors, the GU50 and the power supply. The power supply for the oscillator is a microwave transformer which is controlled by a variac. This is rectified by two diodes from a microwave and smoothed by a capacitor. The transformer under the mod is a filament transformer. Very roughly explained, the circuit consists of two oscillating circuits. The first oscillating circuit consists of the coil L2 and the self capacitance L2. In combination with the GU50 this forms an oscillator. The second oscillating circuit consists of the coil L1 and the self capacitance L1. We can also call L1 a resonator. By the stimulation through the first oscillating circuit a very strong electric as well as magnetic field is generated at the open end of the resonator by resonance transformation which is fed back into the vacuum tube via a capacitive feedback. This maintains and tunes the oscillation. <laughs> yes, that sounds complicated. One important thing guys, do never ever touch the breakout point or the plasma flame. As you can see, the breakout point is not galvanically isolated from the mod like a normal Tesla coil. Even if the mod is floating, which means that the mod is not grounded, it does not mean that you can touch the flame in any way. So guys, don't do this. Here are a few coil values that will definitely get you a great output. If the coil doesn't work, it's the best to check the pin out again, mistakes tend to be happen here. The advantage of tubes is that you can overload them quite a bit. How much you will see soon. The anode of the GU50 is made of a special nickel alloy, specially coated, so it can shortly dissipate more than 100 watts on anode without destruction. So the perfect tube for us. You know what would be really cool? This setup on a PCB. All PCB makes it possible. All PCB is a high quality PCB manufacturer where you can produce your own PCBs. You can make normal PCBs, premium PCBs and you can even have your own PCBs assembled. Over 200,000 components are available. 
Do you want to have a flexible PCB? No problem. A CNC mill enclosure for the next Tesla coil? No problem. The state-of-the-art production chains allow your PCBs to be produced and shipped within the next 24 hours. Besides different colors, there are a lot of parameters you can choose from. If you register at all PCB via the link in the video description, you will get a coupon worth $5. This means nothing else that the first PCBs are free. So guys, check them out. I will now show you my setup. It was important for me that the whole setup is as compact as possible, but still powerful. As a power supply we use this mod, which you control via a Variac. I wound the two coils L1 and L2 on a PVC pipe. But optimal would be ceramic. Ceramic has very low dielectric losses and would therefore increase efficiency. The 10K grid resistor can handle a lot power with 150 watts. The 1 nano capacitor consists of two 2.2 doorknob caps. For the capacitor feedback I have a small hint for you. Thin metal sheets can be clamped well in tension springs. Then you don't have to solder. Soldering at the breakout point is generally not a good idea because the solders start melting after a very short time. I think we are now ready for some tests. For this I first preheat the tube for a couple of minutes. At a voltage of 200 volts, the electric field is strong enough to let a fluorescent lamp light up. The circuit operates on about 24 MHz. I will now show you why the GU50 is a little beast. As I mentioned at the beginning, you should only ignite the flame with an insulated arc stick. I decided to use a ball electrode because there you can see the flame traveling around. Guys, that was really unbelievable. I don't use salt or glass on the breakout point. That is cheating. I don't need this. Let's kill the Geo 50. Guys, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Unfortunately, this little tube is dead now. But at the end of voltage of 2.6 kV, that is no surprise. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And then guys, we'll see us in the next video.